from all over the place here. So hello will be the way that I'll deal with that. Um, this is the third class in this mentorship series that uh, we started earlier this year. And the whole six uh, module course is really about uh, taking a look at how the channel system helps us survive adversity. You know, we've had a tremendous year of adversity, a little longer than a year now. And uh, many of us are uh, recognizing our survival skills and uh, the costs of survival. So today what we'll be doing is looking at how the primary channel system, particularly the middle jowl and the organs of digestion help us to manage uh, life-changing challenges. So here we're looking at how we recognize uh, when we're stuck in survival mode. Survival mode is a useful thing. It's an important thing. Survival is the primary goal, but getting stuck in survival mode starts to create diminishing returns after a while. And so it's important to recognize the need for survival response is um, no longer necessary and we can go back to working on thriving. So we'll look at when we're stuck in survival mode. We've been looking at what the cost of survival is because for every system, there is a way that it helps us survive but there's always a price that we pay for that uh, event. And so we look at the costs and then we look at how we can reduce the costs and restore healthy function. So today we're gonna do all that with the focus on um, the middle jowl. And in that sense, it fits in part of a bigger sort of system. So this is module three. So the primary channel system does not have a direct mechanism for creating latency for survival, but it does play a very, very important role in self-preservation. And it does that through its ability to support digestion. It's important to remember that in the channel system, when we talk about physical function of the middle jaw like digestion, there's an expanded view on that too, because we're also talking about digesting life, if you will. Um, like the low collateral system that we talked about last time, the primary channels are yin chi vessels. Meaning the chi that circulates in the system is nutritive chi. It is the chi that is associated with blood. It's the chi aspect of blood. And one of the jobs of this yin chi or nutritive chi is to make sure that we are nourished enough to maintain organ function. And therefore a good healthy digestive system is a, uh, important and essential to our capacity to nourish ourselves. Enough to maintain organ function for sure, for survival, but also to be fully nourished. Um, every day that we live, every experience that we have, uh, we are taking in and letting go. So you can think of that as digestion, okay? I eat something, I digest something, I assimilate the nutrients from that, and then I let go of the waste. That is what the physical aspects of digestion do for us. But we're also digesting every experience we have. We're taking it in, we're breaking it down, we're trying to understand it, we're trying to gain some nourishment from that experience, and then we're also trying to let go of that which no longer is useful to us. So we are uh, constantly digesting life. To digest life or process life productively, 
By productively, I mean in a way that not only supports survival, but also in a way that nourishes and helps us learn and grow, right? Um, and to be able to maintain sufficient resources for sustaining life, we have to have good digestive function. If that digestive function is productive, if it is doing its job, then we are much less likely to drain our prenatal resources and experiences in a way that sustains life and nourishes us, then we will not have to depend on our prenatal resources in order to uh, grow and develop. So in that way, you could say that uh, productive digestion and the resulting healthy organ function that comes from that supports the pursuit of our destiny. And it does that by preserving our prenatal resources um, that are called upon when our digestion fails. So we may be gifted with these prenatal resources in a way that is sufficient to the task, but in order not to deplete them ahead of time, ahead of when they might be needed in life, it is essential that we can manage from day to day through healthy digestion and the projection of postnatal resources that stop the depletion of the prenatal ones. So in that sense, we could say that if we are taking in more than we can digest, whether that's food or life, that can absolutely derail our health. So when we look at this from an acupuncture point of view, what we're really talking about is some of the essential functions of the middle jowl and what the middle jowl does for us in terms of chi. So when we do acupuncture, we're trying to influence the flow of chi and in our capacity to influence chi flow, we're really looking to restore the balance between yin and yang. We're looking to regulate and harmonize the circulation of chi and or blood. We're looking to help dispel pathogenic factors. Um, and this is all something that is readily and easily done through the primary channel system. We can use the primary channel system to accomplish all of these things. The primary channel system's job is to keep us alive by protecting organ function and to make sure that the organs are nourished enough to maintain function. They supply postnatal resources for organ health through the process of digestion. Once something has entered the interior, so once something has gotten past Wei Qi and has moved inside, the primary channels determine if that thing, whatever it is, is a threat. If it is a threat, then the yin-yang relationship between the zong and the fu organs, the yin and the yang organs, allows for removal or elimination of that thing or the ability to direct the threat to the other systems in order to create latency. So if you eat something that is tainted, that has a dangerous bacteria or something in it, once that gets inside to your digestive tract, the primary channel system determines that it's toxic in nature and it creates the ability for you to throw up, to get rid of that. Or if it's moved past your stomach to give you diarrhea, to get rid of it. Um, there is function there that determines the ability to take something that might be pernicious to the yin organs, the zong organs, and remove that 
threat through the foo organs out of the body. When a threat cannot be eliminated in that way, the primary channel system then takes that substance and moves it into the other systems in order to create latency. So it might send it to the low collaterals, or it might send it to the divergent meridians, or it might send it into the eight extras in order to create latency so that it cannot do harm to organ function. So in that sense, you could say that the primary channel system is really um, the gatekeeper of the interior. It is the sort of organizing hub in the middle of the channel system. And therefore, you know, it's a very useful system to be uh, capable of using. So what do they do? The primary channel system circulates yin qi, which is the qi aspect of blood. It has a direct connection to the zong fu, if you will. So each channel has a connection to at least the organ that it is associated with, and also the yin yang paired organ, and in many cases, other organs as well. So we have a very, uh, direct way to connect to organ function. The primary channel system is responsible for the production of postnatal resources. By that, I mean the primary channel system and its control over digestion helps us to make qi, blood, and body fluids in a way that maintains health and organ function. It's also tasked with preserving prenatal resources by making sufficient postnatal resources. So we don't need to draw on kidney yin for function if our stomach chi is making enough body fluids. The primary channel also houses the five spirits, each of the five zong organs. Um, are uh, capable of housing a, one of the five spirits or one of the five mental emotional faculties that we have for function. And so uh, the primary channel system has a lot to do with um, mental and emotional processing, if you will. So it's important to really understand yin qi as opposed to wei qi or yuan qi when we understand the primary channel system. Nutritive qi or yin qi is closely associated with blood. It is the qi that provides the motive force for blood and blood nourishes the organs and the tissues. And so this is a type of chi that nourishes our capacity for interaction, the ability to um, make connections, the ability to uh, assimilate, the ability to support choice through attention and intention. Um, it mediates the relationship between thinking and feeling balances the mental process with the emotional process. Yin Qi helps us to figure out how we fit in in the world. And it is accessed directly through the primary channels, through the low collaterals, especially the low points, and any channel or point that's directly linked to blood. So anytime you're dealing with blood, you're going to be dealing with Yin Qi. Ying Qi helps us to either manage our feelings through its circulation or to find a way to repress or suppress them if they're too uncomfortable. So we have an experience in life that is uncomfortable 
we can either digest that experience through the process of yin chi, learn something about it or learn something about ourselves, or if it's too uncomfortable, then the yin chi can be can divert the experience into other systems so that we don't have to deal with it directly. The emotional experience that's associated with yin chi is more conscious than in other channel systems. It's, uh, there's a certain amount of awareness that comes with the yin chi experience of emotions. Patients can typically tell you um, what they're feeling. They can also tell you who or what is triggering those feelings, what kind of an event, what kind of an experience, what is it that is making them uncomfortable. So there's a, an acute amount of awareness at the level of yin chi. That awareness is also part of what makes everything so uncomfortable. And so if we cannot deal with that awareness, then we will find some place to put that experience so that we don't have to deal with it directly. Ying Chi, uh, in its emotional functioning, is a lot about validation. We want to be sure that what we're feeling is okay, that what we're thinking is okay, that we have some self-worth, some self-esteem, and that we're not wrong for feeling the way that we're feeling. Um, Ying Chi, because of its connection to the middle Zhao, is also um, about the development of habituated habits. So when we experience something, we develop habits around our response to that experience. For instance, if we when we're younger, touch something hot and we get a burn, then Ying Chi helps us to process the pain of that experience, the fear around that experience. And then we build habits that help us to avoid having that experience again. So here we're talking about uh, not just touching hot things as a physical experience, but also social habits around judgment of others. If we say or do something and we're judged harshly for that, then we begin to develop habits around not doing that kind of thing again. And as we do that, we become a little bit less of who we are because we don't want to be judged harshly by others. We don't want to be found wanting. We don't want to be found uh, less than, if you will. So, the emotional response that's 